rattling some nerves in the ag industry. We're in a financial downturn. Some say it's not quite like the crisis back in the 80s. Find out how you can navigate through these tough times. And not enough power to override a presidential veto. That's ahead with the waters of the U.S. rule. We have reaction from lawmakers. And restricting hog operations for meat packers get both sides of this debate. And you farmers out there could learn a few things from the wine industry. You might want to change some of your operations. We'll explain. It's time to grow. Tonight, we begin with the waters of the U.S. rule. As promised, President Obama vetoed legislation that would have put an end to the EPA regulations in this rule. The president says it is necessary to protect waters that are vital for the health of communities. Industry groups say expanding the scope of waters subject to the act's jurisdiction would lead to greater permitting requirements for landowners and greater legal liability. So without enough votes to override the presidential veto, this rule stays in place. But some senators say they will plan to continue to fight it. Senator Ben Sass and Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma are asking the Department of Justice to investigate if the EPA is willingly violating federal law by promoting the WOTUS rule. The fact that the Government Accountability Office has found that the EPA broke federal law by running a covert propaganda campaign with taxpayer dollars to support the bureaucrats' own sweeping waters of the U.S. rule, the EPA is now doubling down on its lawlessness. It's clearly time for the Department of Justice to investigate. Sass adds that no bureaucracy is above the law. Court cases against the regulation are still pending with 29 states. The rules are designed to protect smaller bodies of water from development and pollution. And other lawmakers are speaking out as well. Congressman Adrian Smith, he spoke with us about the veto. Well, the president said it's necessary to protect waters that are vital for our communities. That's kind of hard to disagree with, isn't it, Congressman? Well, he's wrong. He, he could have taken this opportunity to find some common ground to address some of the challenges uh, that uh, local officials might find or even some farmers and ranchers. But the, the president and his administration chose to reach uh, much farther than was necessary. And, and I think uh, even now with the courts weighing in, I think eventually the president will e even regret this. You have said that, quote, this rule is one of the largest abuses of executive power in modern history. Do you mean that literally? Was that hyperbole? You really think this is one of the largest abuses of executive power? No, I, I mean that. And, and especially, uh, as you touched on earlier, uh, with, with the surrounding issues of how the EPA went about this. And, uh, you know, clearly th this is an issue that has failed to pass in Congress previously. So this is one of the examples where the president, you know, has carried out his threat to uh, use his pen and his phone to go around Congress uh, because we did not uh, pass the bill that he wanted us to. But it's, it's our job uh, as a legislative branch uh, to, to do our business. And I realize he vetoed this, but I think it's important uh, that uh, we went ahead and passed this. I know the Senate, uh, I believe this afternoon, was taking up an override vote uh, that, that uh, was going to fall short. But uh, the record is important as we do move forward. So what do you expect to happen as you move forward here, Congressman Smith? What do you think is going to happen next? Well, the courts uh, will continue to weigh in. I also believe that this will be an issue that will be part of the presidential campaign uh, debates. Uh, as I, I would imagine, all the Republican candidates probably agree uh, on this issue. But uh, I would imagine that uh, once we get to the general election, that it will get uh, quite a bit of debate between the candidates, and, and I think uh, that's healthy because it, uh, the more we talk about it, I think the more people realize that this is an overreach of the federal government. And as for Senator Deb Fisher, she has this to say, quote, while the courts explore the legality of this rule, I will continue to fight to protect Nebraskans from this unnecessary federal intervention. 
Steve Nelson with Nebraska Farm Bureau responds by saying, quote, even though the Government Accountability Office has found the EPA used illegal covert propaganda to sway public opinion in favor of the rule and the courts have temporarily halted implementation of the rule, this administration continues to move forward. We will not rest until this rule is stopped. And a bill that would end Nebraska's ban on meat packers owning hog operations, that's finding some difficulty in the state legislature. Ogallala Senator Ken Schills says he introduced the bill to keep the state's hog industry growing on pace with nearby states and to prevent meat packers from leaving. But critics say it would give packers too much leverage over small farms by allowing them to control the entire supply chain. Meanwhile, ag groups are hoping it passes. The Nebraska Farm Bureau is releasing a statement saying, quote, this law limits opportunities for Nebraska farm families, and it's slowly killing hog production in our state. Arguments that removing the ban will harm independent producers don't hold up. Iowa doesn't prevent pork processors from owning hogs, and they still procure nearly one half of their hogs from independent producers, end quote. Now here's some reactions that we got from earlier this last month. It will solve no known problem, but it will drive those independent producers that are still left out of business. Nebraska Farmers Union fought the proposal last year, but the bill by Senator Ken Schills of Ogallala will carry over into the 2016 legislative session. Pork producers and Farm Bureau favor lifting the ban, saying it's holding the state back. We're the only state now that has a ban on Packers owning livestock. So when you look at the states around us, they're growing in livestock, especially in the hog numbers. And so it doesn't take a lot of reasoning in my mind anyway to say, you know what, this is one of the things that we can fix to be more competitive with the neighbors that are attracting livestock. But Farmers Union argues all it would benefit is giant packers like Smithfield. Who happens to be a company that is 100% owned by the Chinese Communist government. And it is their uh, marker in the marketplace uh, to help meet their national food security needs. Farm Bureau disagrees, with leaders saying pig farmers already have many contract arrangements, and this is another option. It's really an issue of who farmers can partner with. Uh, right now we can partner with a lot of different people. Packers are the only people that we can't partner with, so it just gives us another option on the table. And the heat is on for lawmakers to make a decision about property taxes. Governor Pete Ricketts says he feels the urgency from Nebraskans wanting to see progress, including Ricketts' plan to change the tax system while having a tighter budget for spending. There's several proposals. Another option, raising tobacco taxes to $2.10 a pack. It's up to 49 lawmakers to decide the path forward. But according to Ricketts, there are some things you can do in the meantime to help your community with tax relief. Consider going to budget meetings, share your property tax bill, urge restraint in budgeting, and look for ways to achieve tax relief by lowering the levy. Should Nebraskans be guaranteed the right to farm? A local lawmaker and cattleman says activists are threatening Nebraska agriculture. NTV's Grow co-host Steve White has more on this. Senator John Keene says it's about protecting Nebraska farmers and ranchers. Nebraska has sued California over egg laying laws, and many farmers are concerned about a GMO labeling law in Vermont. In both cases, farm groups say those state laws are based on emotion and not sound science. And Senator Keene doesn't want those kinds of laws on the books in Nebraska. Certainly, uh, protecting uh, agriculture is important, not just on the livestock side, but in terms of the technology that we employ and the freedom to employ that technology in crop production as well. So it, it certainly represents a, a critical step forward into saying Nebraska is an agricultural state and we prioritize that. When asked about the right to farm proposal, Nebraska Farmers Union says it sounds like protection for corporate farms, not the kind of family farms they value. You know, our view is that uh, the, the kind of food production system that is the envy of the world is our traditional system of independent family farmer, owner, operator agriculture. Nebraska Farm Bureau leaders, on the other hand, have been vocal in opposition to what they see as activist groups like PETA and the Humane Society of the United States. However, Farm Bureau leaders say property taxes need to be the focus in the legislature. Senator Keene's right to farm proposal would actually amend the state constitution and if approved by lawmakers would then go to a vote of the people. 
Another long-fought battle over water. A lawsuit was filed, and it does go back to the decisions of that Republican River Compact. The defendants include Department of Natural Resources and some NRDs along the Republican River. Bostwick Irrigation claims surface water dried up because of well pumping. Since the state must comply with the compact and limited water, Bostwick claims only surface water users have been shut off to meet that compact compliance. Bostwick is under closing notice for this year, meaning they will not be able to divert or store water to irrigate. The suit claims management and closing notices are unlawful. The director is exceeding authority and these actions are taking away property without compensation. The district covers over 22,000 acres. The suit represents more than 160 members of Bostwick. Biosecurity methods are in action. Over 400,000 birds euthanized in Indiana. They were infected with the bird flu. The H7N8 virus was first detected last week and spread to 10 different farms. As of Saturday, no new cases emerged. This particular strain is different than the one from last year that led to the deaths of more than 48 million birds across the country. Ag officials have been developing a vaccine that could either stop the spread or prevent the virus. As of now, a company working with the USDA has the medicine on hold, ready for a call to distribute. Here's an effort to help more Nebraska students understand agriculture and its importance. Farm Credit Services of America gives a boost to science literacy initiative at UNL. The $100,000 gift will support the university's efforts to integrate agriculture and natural resources education into pre-K through 12th grade curriculum. It's time to get focused. Find out what you can do to get through this financial downturn in the ag industry. That's coming up next and later on we have your grow forecast tell you what to expect in the next week ahead.